welcome back. Welcome back to Dylan's Little Hobbies. And you know what? Ever since Rogue One, I had an idea for a Star Wars story, and I decided to make it. I have done part one. Go ahead and check that out on my channel if you guys want to. There'll be a playlist at the end of this video, or a playlist card that will come up all about Star Wars The Rise, my fan-made book. I have written part one. I have put it onto YouTube, you guys seem to really enjoy part one, so here I am doing part two. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will of course narrate it, but I am not a professional speaker or a professional writer. This is just a fan made story, made by me, Star Wars The Rise, part two. Let's get into it. Chapter six. Sith History Lesson It's been a few days since Dash and Cavan returned from the hill. Dash mostly slept in his bed, only getting up every now and again to pet Bo the Zabarath. Cavan sits on a stool eating breakfast when Jarv stops by. Good morning, Cavan. As he does, Dash walks out with a rope in his hand. It's tied to Bo. He took it over to a tree so Bo could eat some leaves. What did you do to him? You asked that yesterday and every day since we got back from the hill, Cavan answered. I told you, the only way he can control his power is to accept it's his. He needed to hear the harsh truth. You need to put pressure on a wound so it can heal. Kevin then eats more space waffles. Jarv sips his morning tea as he watches Bo eat leaves. What are your plans for him? What does Slade hope to accomplish? Jarv asked as he turns to Kevin. He finished his waffles and puts down the plate. It's simple, Jarv. He stood up to reach Jarv's height. Do you know why Sith eyes turn yellow? Jarv shakes his head. They're a window to the soul. Most have a light color. A dark mark as one for adventure. Green or hazel, a mark of power. Calling yourself a Sith means nothing. Only a true Sith will turn. It's symbol of purging the light within you. And the only way to do it is to hate. Truly, it's a painful hate so much, it aches. To live with such hate, it purges whatever light you have. I hate Sith. I want to destroy them all. So why would I make another Sith? Why would I make another me? That will only darken the future. He turns towards Dash. He's a bright light, a tool I plan to use to destroy the Sith and create a bright future, one without my hateful eyes. But he must learn control and calmness if he is to be the opposite of a Sith. He will be bright, happy shield of the future. That is my plan. Jarv nodded his head, can't you let it go? I'm fine with the bright future, but can't you let the past go? Jarv asks. Kevin turns to Jarv, I am the past. The dead are the past, and I won't let his past haunt him like it haunts me. It keeps me alive, surely, but it is painful. His won't be, he said. Dash then. Dash then walks up to Kevin and Jarv. You look awful, Kevin said to Dash. Jarv hit him as if to say, stop that. Yes, master. It took me a while, but I'm ready. For what, Jarv said. My next lesson, Kevin nodded in approval. Listen, you need to stay calm, not lose your head. Meditating will help you with that, so you will meditate with Jarv in the morning until noon. While you do so, 
I want you to feel and reach out into the force. You must learn how. Then at noon, I shall train you how to bow with a sword, during which you also have bow to look after. Responsibility is important. And finally, before bed, you will write down what you have learned. MD3 can teach you how to read and write and speech. And so Dash did this every day until one day when his master was sitting down eating breakfast. It's been two months since he began his training. Hey, master. Yes, Gavin answered. Remember that day when the Sith first attacked? You spoke to each other. The language seemed odd. You seemed really mad when she said Jedi. I learned a lot from MD3 and was wondering about that. Hmm, I see. You were wondering about the language we used and what was said. Dash nodded. So many languages are out there. The most common are the basic. But there is plenty of languages no longer spoken, barely used. One is the ancient Sith language. It's so old that a majority don't know it. It was only taught to true Sith and students. It's very hard to speak, but if you know the most basic of the words, you can easily follow to some degree. Basic of words? Yes, the language of the Force. The oldest language in all the galaxy. It's now considered a dead language. No one actually knows what the words mean. Yet almost all of languages derive from it. There are nine words in all. The Sith language drives its speech from them as well. Let me tell you. Number one, Ashla. The meaning? Lights, good, growth, life? Some even think it means to build or warmth. Two, Bogan. Meaning dark, death, decay, bad, or destroy. Incomplete. Cold, basically, it's the opposite of the first. Three, Jet. It's an odd word. Some think it means to complete, to save, or protector. Might even mean peacekeeper or peace seeker. Four, bista, or liquid, water, or giver of life and death. Five, ana, or home, space. Some might uh, think it means sky or universe. Six, daida. Day, nighttime, or all of the above. 7. A Zabarath. Some think it means creature, or I, animal, or person. People think it's the first biological creature. And yes, the dragon over there was named from this word. 8. Kin, people, clan, or family. All of these are so unclear, so ancient, no one knows. Truly, we might be wrong entirely. Nothing is more unclear than the knife, though. Its meaning is so unknown and highly debated, or at least by those who do use it. What is this knife word, Master? Dash asked. Number 9. Sith. I was taught it means king, or lord, or ruler, master of all, a savior, a god. The original speaker of this speech came from an unknown planet, but was documented on Jeddah. When people landed there, they probably heard Jedanana, which after you look at it with some context, probably what they were saying was protect home from what? From 
The strangers, obviously. This language is what we heard from them in archives, but mostly through symbols, not actual speech. Either way, a few saw Sith and used it for themselves. That's how the Sith would have started using the word. These are the nine symbols here. Kevin picks up one of Jar's old books and ships through it. There. The language of the Force, if you can call it that. Dash looked through it. They do seem odd, Jarv nodded. Anyway, basically that day, the they she mm, boy. Anyway, basically that day she spoke to me. She was mocking me, in the simplest terms. She said I was a fool for protecting them. My light couldn't defeat her darkness. She will become top Sith. And I yelled back, Your darkness knows no truth, I shall kill Sith. But she thought I was protecting them, which is why in the speech she said, Jedi, Jedi, protector I, it means truly nothing to me. You know how I work? Now go your light for meditation. A few days later, Kevin was teaching Dash the right way to hold a blade in his hand. Kevin noticed he wasn't paying close attention. Alright, so if you're in an attack position, your opponent can fling your blade out of your hand if you don't have the right position. It should always be held like this, firmly in grip and never let... Kevin stopped as he noticed Arthur stirring. Kevin stopped as he noticed Dash staring at Bo. Hey, are you even paying attention, kid? He asked. Dash shook his head. I'm sorry, Master. You said to hold the blade like this, right? Kevin nodded as he said yes. He looked at Dash firmly. Are you alright? It's not like you to be so distracted during a lesson. He turned to his master. Oh, it's just that, um, he replied. My homeworld was so basic. I'd never ever seen a ship before or a blaster. We had spears and knives made from rock. Very little metal work. House held together by straw. Space travel thanks to Bo's mother and... That's it. He looked up at the sun. We did have history of when we had a star to call home, but we never traveled among the galaxy before. Learning how to speak basic normally and not primitive as well as learning the galactic history is making me only ask more questions. Kevin laughed and smiled. Ask away, my boy, ask away, he said. Okay, then, tell me about your people. I know they're bad guys, but what is the history of the Sith? Kevin was a little surprised about the question. Hmm... Let me think, he answered. Well, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Though you won't be able to understand everything, Dash nodded his head, as if to say, that's alright, please tell me. Very well then, very well then. You see, we don't know how old the galaxy is, but for convenience sake, we Record records claim there was a five millennia time frame where life took its time to develop before making the first kyber crystals, the very first signs of life. It would take another millennia for biological life to show up. Many believe in 
the Mortis Sith, or Mortis Gods, the father, daughter, and son, and the crazy old mother who got casted out of their realm and thrown into our space. The brother and the sister had great power and threatened to destroy the very fabric of the universe if the father didn't contain them in a different realm. These are very old legends from before even speech. A species of alien, one of the first intelligent creatures, created the first language, which had many words, but most were lost, other than the ones I told you. There were ancient statues on my homeworld that showed what he could have looked like. From the statues that were very tall, he was big, scaly, had claws and horns like ears, sharp teeth, and was very muscular, yet short in stature. He must have been a leader of his tribe and wanted to better all of his kind. He was a good leader, but still ruled with a strong fist. He claims to meet a woman, not just a woman, but the mother. She would grant him his many desires. At the time, the workings of the Force was unknown, but he was powerful and through his desires of wanting to be a good leader, he would gain more. His desires were met thanks to the Mother Sith. He would not only rule over his tribe, but gain power over his planet, and then capture beasts who could fly in the sky. He flew them through the galaxy and gained more strength. This is where the timeline doesn't add up. The beginning of speech started 10,000 years before the creation of space travel. Yet, it's said during his rule, he went to plant after plant and conquered them, made them better, accelerated their growth until they became able to create space travel. The galaxy is vast, yet he could fly from one end to the other. He conquered pretty much the entire galaxy. He did many things and went on many adventures. He almost lost his life to a Zabarath like Bo, but while it stopped him from ruling everything, he had much in his grasp already by that point. Was he evil? The answer was no. He only wanted to make a peaceful galaxy and ruled it as such. He expanded language and technology. It was said the great three Sith temples were spaceships designed by him and the mother, powered by kyber crystals. He was a good man by all accounts. That was the Sith all taught. He needed to be the rightful ruler, but as with all life, they call any ruler a tyrant. Good or not, he was absolutely powerful, and the saying is absolute power corrupts absolutely. But according to the Sith, it never did go to his head. But he was powerful, and others wanted his power. He didn't mind. He liked the challenge. No one could be him, ever. Or so it seemed. His rule that would last forever came to a surprising end. By this point, he was ancient, became frail, old, and weak, but only physically. Still, for an immortal god, he was mortal in the end. He was alive after all. He had many students across the galaxy, teaching them his ways and rule. Seven of them joined together and finally fought against him. It took everything they had to beat him, but he finally lost, 
naming them the Seven Sith Lords. As he died. Then most of the galaxy was split into seven pieces and fought for control. As time went on, the rest got smaller and smaller. For a few thousand years, it was ruled by many kings and queens with knights in the midst of war with one another. Until people got tired of it. It was only a few centuries ago that the first Republican government was established on Coruscant. The Sith became nothing but a legend, but they did die out. They still want the power the first Sith had. They want to rule the galaxy. It's their dream. They want to live forever and become gods. So they call themselves gods. Well, the original word for it at least, the Sith. Dash thought to himself for a moment in awe of his lesson today. Then he turned to Kevin and asked, And you, Master? You are already immortal. Don't you want to create a peaceful galaxy? Don't you want to rule it as a Sith? Kevin's eyes turned to Dash, but not his head. Good question, he said as he brought it his eyes forward again. Hmm. Simply put, I could care less of the galaxy. Oh, so I thought. Revenge for my mother is one thing, but to tell the truth here, I made good friends. He drops his head. I understand wanting to fight for someone else. And for something greater than myself, he raised his head and turned to face Dash. But ruling with an iron fist, that only creates a necessary war. People will always want your power. Just look at where the first Sith ended up. He should be mortal, too, but he died, and so will I. Simply put, Talking to one another, understanding one another, even if you don't agree. These are the key to a peaceful galaxy. I'd rather create that than he stopped and thought for a moment. In fact, this is your life task, Dash. I want you to create an organization that will keep the peace throughout the galaxy forever. One that will never fall, as problems can be avoided as long as you talk them out. However, the Sith are so barbaric, bent in their ways. There is no communicating with them, even though it sounds wrong. They must be eliminated for the peace of the galaxy. Otherwise, if they have their way, there will never be peace. Take this lesson to heart, my student. Class dismissed. Kevin then walked away as Dash nodded to himself about his master's words.